This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Hey Grant, good to hear from you today. How are you? I'm fine, Phil. It's a beautiful day in the Ozarks. Certainly is. It's not as warm as it is in the Bahamas, but it's nice. It's beautiful. The <laughs> leaves still uh, have the colors. A hey, um, how much stock are we putting in the next uh, few games for this Arkansas basketball team? Because you know, you, you, had a, you had an exhibition against a team that might be in the Final Four and then four games against mid-majors, a disappointing loss, and now you're staring at four games that are going to be against really, really good teams. I mean, four teams you may face in March. Who knows? Yeah, I think you're putting a lot of stock in these. In fact, Eric, so he's already talking about how important these games are just to make the NCAA tournament or have a chance to do that. So uh, he knows – how much is on them and how really they haven't played very well the last two games, I didn't think. And he, he was pretty concerned after the last game uh, to the point that he was talking about maybe changing some things on defense and, uh, you know, maybe not able to cover as well as he thought at the guard position. And then also rebounding is a concern. So uh, it, it, it looked and felt a lot better after that Purdue game, didn't it, uh, than after the last couple and obviously Purdue is very good. They beat Tennessee last night. Tennessee's favored to win the SEC. Uh, did you guys stay up long enough to uh, to watch the fireworks and the Marquette uh, game against Kansas last night? What happened? Did Hunter Dickinson steal the show? You know, what happened was uh, there was a big dust-up between the coaches, and, the, and they, they ran on the floor for a second. <laughs> Even in Maui, where everything is supposed to be laid back, um, you know, it's funny. One time, Arkansas, one time, Arkansas beat Kansas. There, I remember, and Kansas went zero and three, and their fans weren't very happy. But last night, um, I guess Shaka took exception to uh, something that uh, one of the Kansas players said as he went by the bench. Actually, Marquette was beating them pretty good, and they end up winning the game seventy three fifty nine. You know, a number one versus number four game, but that kind of set things off and. You know, they called them together, and you could see Bill Self, after all the discussion, you could see him say twice, unbelievable. Like, you know, like, what is he doing over there? But, I mean, for about the first 11 or 12 minutes, Marquette played manic defense. I mean, they just they played so hard defensively. It was amazing and really kind of set the tone. And uh, it, it wasn't quite that way after the, after the dust-up, but um, – you know, for them to beat Kansas by 14 was a pretty good early statement in this basketball season. Grant, who do you think, who, who do you see as our two best guards on this basketball team? You know, is, it still, well, is, is Devo still up there? As, as yeah, I, I, I still think Devo, you know, he, he's your fourth year guy, you know, and I think probably, um, I think probably Mark is the other one, even though Ellis has, has done it. You know, he, he's the guy with the ball in his hand the most. Um, but I think Mark, you know, Mark, you could tell, uh, took it hard when they lost that game the other night. And, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to set him against it. There's a lot of good ones, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, that would be my answer, I guess, at the moment. What about in the post? You know, I mean, I think we're – who, who's going to defend? Who's going to defend without getting into foul trouble there? That's the thing with Makai that I worry about, and he can disappear every once in a while. You know, I mean, the, to me, these next four games, I want to see if Jalen Graham can stay on the floor, if he can defend, if he can rebound. You know, I just don't think they've – and I would like to see that that back is is, uh, yeah. is is something that can loosen up a little bit. I still think he's got a lot of promise for this team. Yeah, he had an eight-rebound game earlier, and then, he, of course, he had those back spasms that didn't even dress out the other night, and that hurt them because Makai got into foul trouble, didn't play very much. Uh, and so then you're, you're basically, I don't, you know, I think Brazil uh, is somewhat miscast. As like a, he, he's a guy that floats around and makes spectacular plays, but without Mitchell in there, uh, who really has been, uh, I think inconsistent. I mean, he, he he had a tremendous game the game before that, and then there's some games where you can't find him. So uh, I know that's a concern for Eric is is uh, is post play. 
Yeah, he, he's more of a finesse than, than a force. And, and sometimes I, th- I think as a big, you're, you're kind of relying on these guards to get you the ball a little bit because it's such a, 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 a guard-dominated sport. Uh, Grant, let me let me ask you a little bit about football. What what do, what do you want to see out of the Hogs against Missouri? Did you, and did you see the the selection committee's uh, new new top five? Yeah, I did. I, I was a little surprised by that. I mean, they you know they I noticed their noses didn't grow when they said that it had nothing to do with the injury to Florida State's quarterback. <laughs> but they, I mean, why? I was wondering about put, that. Yeah, why well, would they you did put say a Washington team they did, that just won by two points over you know an undefeated Florida State team. They, they did say, Grant, that it was that, that that's something they might take into account once the conference championship games are over. You know, once right. you have the once you have your your season resumes complete, you know that then you then you can maybe start going a little bit off of well who's available. I still don't like the idea of going off of who's available. You know, you got to go off of what you, what the team has done with a body of work for a team, and it's. It's wild to think about, like, uh, you know, a game in the second week isn't supposed to mean as much as, as a game near the end of the season. But then, I mean, what are we playing these games for? Is it just, does that, does that mean that the fifth week of the season means more yeah. than the second week? I mean, I, well, just, I just don't get it. And why is Alabama still at eight when they've been, to me, one of the best teams in the country the last five, six weeks? I mean, I, I know it all sorts itself out. But to me, the big question is going to be, if Alabama beats Georgia, does that knock Georgia out completely? You know, we still got a lot of undefeated teams left. Now, Michigan and Ohio State are going to play each other, and so that'll be, that'll knock it down by one. But uh, to me, it, I mean, if Alabama beats Georgia, they got to be in the Final Four, right? Wouldn't well, you, then what I do you mean, do with Texas, right? That's the thing. Texas is ranked ahead of Alabama because they beat I know. them, right? If, I know. if they go and they end up beating the only team that beat them, uh, oh, well, I don't know what the Big 12 is going to lead to because this last week decides who Texas plays. You know, I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, that Texas win yeah. over Alabama has got to mean something at some point. It does right well, now because they're ahead of them. But it would be crazy yeah. to think. I mean, again, some of it has to do with whatever the rankings are going into the championship games. But if Alabama beats Georgia, you move in the eighth seed over four other teams, that's just a big jump. I suspect it'll sort itself out just by what happens on the field, but you know maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's one of those five into four won't go things this year. Same with uh, Oregon and Washington, you know, because if, if Oregon beats Washington, both their losses would be to each other, and and, and right. everybody's kind of just saying, well, if Oregon wins, then they're going to be in. But Matt, you asked me about Arkansas, and I, I think that uh, I, I want to see effort. I mean, I want to see if these guys went crazy in the locker room for the announcement that Sam was staying next year and let's see that kind of effort because that's what it's going to take against a Missouri team that that has this this guy Schrader who's rushed for more than 1,200 yards probably going to win the Burlesworth Award and has a good chance to uh, they've got Brady Cook who's been very good they're coming off a game really when they they had a Houdini escape uh, we all watched the end of that game down there in the interview room the other day when they completed that 4th and 17 pass to keep going and, and beat Florida, you know, with a field goal at the end. So um, they've won, what is that? I think they've won five close ones in a row. And I think I read that Arkansas is two and six in its last eight one score games. So it's probably going to have to, you know, if Arkansas could play great and win the game, it may come down to field goal kicking and both teams love their field goal kickers. You know, Drinkwitz made a big deal out of their guy not being a a, a Groza Award semifinalist, so he'll have something to prove. And uh, I mean, I hope it's a game like that. I mean, I hope it's uh, a competitive game. And you you know, you hear these things about Missouri's fans wanting to take over the stadium and what's that going to look like. I I really thought uh, there were more fans Saturday night than I expected, and it was good weather. And that helped, but uh, I thought it might be twenty thousand. It was probably more like thirty-five or forty. I thought. Yeah, offense has to produce, uh, no question. And then uh, I'm with you, Grant. That running back, he's tough. You got to make their quarterback. You got to make Missouri's quarterback beat you. You you can't let them run the ball on you like that. But the offense, uh, besides this Florida international game, that they're you know the the starting offense scored the last touchdown they scored was September sixteenth against BYU at home. If you're looking at teams that are going bowling and, and, and good teams, so you want to see you want to see this offense against a real football team do anything? 
you know, Sam now refers to Missouri as Arkansas's rival. I don't think fans agree. I, I think they're going to still think it's Texas when Texas comes back in here. But uh, Drinkwitz uh, has a way of, of irritating people sometimes. And I remember when the guy was – he was an assistant coach at Springdale under Kevin Johnson the last year I wrote sports. And I remember this really well. And, and Kevin Johnson uh, passed away at a, at a way too early age, like 46. And Eli applied for the head coaching job. He was the offensive coordinator. And uh, a guy named St. Patrick got the job. And so Eli went to Arkansas State. And I think he was an analyst or something there. And, uh, you know, under Gus and then moved up. And, of course, became he, he went 12-1 and one at Appy State and uh, has done pretty well in Missouri. And, and I know that he rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but he's from this state. And, uh, and maybe through – some of that, this does become more of a rivalry, but Arkansas needs to win a few of these things to make it a real rivalry. Well, look, here's the weird aspect about that. Mizzou's dominated the rivalry. Their fans buy into it. Arkansas fans do not. <laughs> and that's even with, with the Razorbacks losing games to Missouri. So I don't know what it takes. I mean, you saw the reaction from, from uh, the, the baseball schedule. They're pl- Arkansas plays Missouri every year. Nobody wanted that, even though... In, in a lot of our minds, it's like, all right, it's like a series win. Take that. Just be happy with that. Nobody wants yeah, to be. In, nobody wants Missouri to be a rival here in Arkansas. But you're right. Well, Sam did buy yeah. into it because he said that like three or four times in his Monday presser. But he did say he didn't realize the record was 7-2. and two, And it, he did know that Barry Odom was 4-0 and zero, uh, against Arkansas when he was at Missouri. And then I think it's one and two. Uh, I guess Sam is one and two against Missouri. So in his mind, he's trying to make it two and two on Friday. It's been fun watching the women's team for the first uh, five games. I, I like watching them against UCA because uh, while uh, while Taylor had herself a nice game, she wasn't dominant. And um, there were four other players, the starters, that really kind of uh, supported a lot. And then there's another aspect to the women's team so far, and it's something Mike said uh, post game at Arkansas State. He's not sure that they'll be as deep as he thought or hoped that they would be. Uh, so, and we saw that in the way that he used the rotations against UCA and, and really stuck with about six players. Yeah, in fact, in that third quarter, uh, Phil, he played the entire starting five except for four seconds. Uh, at the end of the quarter when Sasha went in there, and I thought she played really well in the fourth quarter. And, the, you know, there's an art to to playing really well when you don't get that many minutes, and she did that that night. But, you know, Saylor made a good point after the game. I think she and Dada together uh, are getting a lot of confidence in each other, and, and Dada has really played much better the last few games, better than I kind of anticipated. And that could make them uh, uh, pretty good this year. But, the, you know, and... I mean, Saylor got six rebounds, and finally somebody held uh, Scott to 17 points. She still was tied for leading scorer, as she's been every game. Uh, but but teams are really starting to, to zero in on her now and make her probably the number one fo- focus of their scouting reports. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.